Let's get programmed. My name is Justin Wilson, and I am the host guy of sorts. I do things into microphones and talk about bands and stuff every week. Yeah? Yay! It's a gig. It is a gig. Maybe I should get paid for it. You should. I will work on that. (laughs) Hey, you, looking at uh, the YouTube machine. I know you're looking. I can tell. I'm not stupid. Hey, quit looking at me like that, first of all. Yes, it's an orange shirt, and yes, this is a unicorn on it. What do you want from my life? It's Ugliography. They're very good <laughs> friends of mine. Look, this Saturday, big day for the station, big day for me in general. I'm going to be awake for 24 hours, sitting right here at the Studio Clubhouse, <laughs> broadcasting for All Day You Drunks 2. It's going to be a great time. Jenny, you were there last year. Yeah. Uh, you even you, you did your guest hour and then came back and hung out for a little bit. Yeah, I went and got some Wawa and came back and yes. just kind of had some snacks. Well, we got more space this year, first of all. Yeah. Which is a, a very big positive. And a couch. So that's good <laughs> news. A couple extra chairs. Uh, I don't know how to, like, because it's, it seems like, you know, I'm patting my own back when I talk about how, how great last year's was. As somebody who was who was there last year, can you describe what it was like, not only just being in the room, you know, listening throughout the day? It was kind just of kind of like having this? a just a long party where like you would kind of jump in at different points. Like after yeah. I left, I would kind of go home and listen to an hour here and there, you know. And it was just it was just a fun time to hang out and talk to friends. And we all had, I mean, you, you, it, it's a bummer we lost everything for it. <laughs> too soon. We too learned. Soon, man. We learned. <laughs> hopefully now, hopefully the uh, equipment doesn't shit the bed on us because it did earlier tonight. So that's great news. Uh-oh. But this was this was a great experience, or we wouldn't be doing it again. And um, it, we raised a little bit of money last year. And one of the biggest things last year was we're gonna we wanted to start a community radio station. And one of our selling points was we're gonna do it whether whether you give us money or not. Mission we, accomplished. <laughs> mission accomplished. Here we are. Uh, we raised we raised just shy of two hundred dollars last year, which that's not bad. Um, we'd like to do better this year. We'd like to. Uh, we've got some legal fees coming up that um, that we're gonna have to pay making the switch to uh, a nonprofit. And man, the biggest thing is right now we call it the Studio Clubhouse because we don't want to call it a garage, but that's what it is. It's a garage. It's Matt's garage, and we've made it l- we've made it look pretty legit in here. And it's it's a very fun space to be mm-hmm. in. Yep. But man, we want to be in a brick and mortar. Man, we want to we want to we want our own office. We want a place that we can call home. Yeah. And with your help, we can do that. Um, we've got T-shirts designed by the lovely yeah. Jenny Zell. Um, <laughs> the the website I think just went live today, so um, we're selling for twenty dollars a piece. Seems pricey for a T-shirt. I I understand. It's for a good cause, but it's for yeah. an, it's an unbelievable cause. It's uh, you're you're getting the T-shirt, yes, but you're also getting all of the program that happens here, which includes this program, Deprogrammed. It also uh, includes Corey's show, Piss Till Midnight on Thursdays. Boom. It, uh, inclu- it includes everything we do here, man. Um, and it helps keep that programming up on the air and going on a weekly basis. Uh, it's going to help us keep our lights on. It's It, it sounds cliche. It's going to pay our bills. Mm-hmm. And it's so that stuff doesn't have to come out of pocket. And we want to be your community radio station. We want to be the place where you go to find a new band that you didn't you didn't know existed. We want you to listen to us for that. We want you to get your sports from us. We want you to to get your pop culture news from us. And by buying the twenty dollar t shirt, you also get a heap of good karma, and who doesn't love that? Right. I definitely need some of that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? If you if you can find your way down here to this studio clubhouse, we'll give you hugs that day. One hundred percent. If you buy a shirt that day, we won't have sh- shirts in hand that day, but uh, we are pre selling them. Um, I th- want to say it's radiofradio dot com slash shop, and right now the shirt is the only thing up there. Again, twenty bucks. But if if you go ahead and and uh, make that. Come on down here. We will hug you. Anybody on the station will owe you a hug. And because that's the kind of thing we have going in here. Jenny isn't technically part of the station, but you are part of the station because, number one, you're you're a regular guest on this program. You're a super supporter. Super fan. 
<laughs> and I just I appreciate how much you care about the things that are happening here. So well, I love the station. I love the concept of it, and you know I listen to it sometimes when I'm at work, and I don't feel like trying to choose something. You know, I just want to listen to something new. Right. And I've discovered several local bands that you guys have played that I, I listen to fairly regularly now. S- see, yeah, and it's just that simple, man. You, you you tune in, you listen for even if you listen for twenty minutes, I guarantee you're. You listen for an hour, I guarantee you, you will find one band that you will like, and you will seek out their their catalog. I can, yeah. I promise you that. Because and you listen to any other radio station for an hour, you're going to get six Maroon Five songs. Yes, <laughs> yes. So. yes. And, and the best thing true. to me too is that this is all local. Like right. you guys are doing this here. Yep. It's everybody's recording in house. It's not like somebody sending in a, a show from California or something. And it's it's mostly local bands yeah. that you can go and see their shows. Mm-hmm. You can give them money and support them yes. directly. Yeah, and um, you know, even with shows like Chocolate Milk and Waffles, I didn't mean for this to end up being an RFR commercial, <laughs> but this is this is big for us this is uh, yeah. saturday is a really big day for us and uh we're, we're taking some major steps uh but like a show like chocolate milk and waffles where where they bring in you know a lot of spoken word artists and dance like like a community that i'm not plugged into and mm-hmm. it's nice that it's nice that we are becoming a place where everybody can come to where everybody has a voice here at rfr and that's mega super important and I feel like this area needs that. Yep. And I feel like I feel like we are something that that can unite this area finally. Like we're seven cities and we act like we're seven cities mm-hmm. instead of trying to be like one major place. Right. And yeah. it kind of bums me out. So I want to continue to fight that fight. Man, we're here to talk about the doors. I, I, <laughs> like I said, I didn't mean to turn this into that. I, I get really impassioned when I start talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. It's Don't all apologize. good. Yeah, overtime, though. So overtime's not just a thing on Thursdays now, dude. Yes, we, we will <laughs> definitely go. We will definitely run over. Uh, all right, so where to start? Okay, so actually, you, you're you the one who brought the doors to the, to the table. I Corey, am. You want to start this off? I am. I am. Uh, Jim Morrison's a huge man crush for me. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm obsessed with him. I'm obsessed with this. Obsessed might be a little a little strong, just a tad. <laughs> um, they to me, man. Um, the Beatles get a lot of credit for starting rock and roll. To me, it's the Doors. If you look at the the true the true sound of what rock and roll is, to me, the Beatles started pop. You know, okay. the Doors sounded. When they came in in 66, nothing sounded like them before them or or since. And, you know, Jim Morrison, just the way he was as a performer, uh, the the political outcries and things of that nature that are in his lyrics, the poet that he is, the artist that he was. It's it's a shame that he died so young because you're, you're looking at a band that revolutionized rock and roll and. They really were only around for about five or six years. They didn't have a lot of longevity, but while they were, while they were a thing, they were they were as strong as anyone. You know, when Jim Morrison was right, they were they were unbeatable. But when he was, you know, on a bender, it it could get <laughs> ugly. See Miami, see New Haven, yeah. but you know, and but at the same time though, those are the things that made the Doors the Doors. And being somebody who was born in '88. You know, I'm a year older, you know, at 20 years old, I'm a year older than Jim Morrison was when he died. But, you know, it's it's growing up listening to, you know, like we were talking about Alice Cooper, growing up listening to stuff that your parents listened to. Right. And, you know, riding around in the car, smoking pot with, you know, a couple buddies of mine. Shout out to Cameron and Carrie if you're listening. <laughs> you know, it, it just riding around getting stoned, listening to the Lizard King, man. And it's it it's 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 more than just music man it's it's depth of lyrics you know which i've always listened to you know it's it's their sound was completely unique nobody sounded like them since so i mean they were a revolution to me man they were the ones that started it all nice now jenny you were the first one to to jump on like i put the doors out there and i feel like it was the next day you're like hey can i get in on yeah. the doors yeah i'm in on that because you know i i can't disagree too much with them because you know, he's not really throwing shade on the Beatles too much there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like the Doors, I definitely went through like a huge phase with them when I was like fourteen to sixteen or so, and like he said, it was you know being young and 
you know, getting into trouble and getting stoned yep. and, mm-hmm. you know, and I listened to these lyrics and it just, it was so different to me. Yep. Um, just the, it was just a poem put to music. Right. Yeah. It's captivating. And it was, it was just something that I'd never really heard before. Um, my mom always used to say that I was a child of the eighties living in the sixties. Like I, when I was about that age, I was consuming everything that had to do with sixties culture, you know, the Beatles, mm-hmm. the doors, the who, like everything. Yep. And the doors was one that, that really stuck with me for a while. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I kind of fell off from them for, for several years. Like I kind of, you know, I didn't dislike them, but I just kind of stopped listening. Right. Um, and so when I sat there and kind of listened to everything in their discography again for this, like I was, it was like seeing an old friend again. You know, yeah. like I just just went right back into it. And I was like, oh, I love this song. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God, this one brings back memories. And, you know, it was just it was just great. Yeah. This has been one of my toughest discoveries yet, because while it while it wasn't like a complete discovery, like everybody's heard of, of, of at least a few door songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I had I had a good basis of like 10 to maybe 12 songs that I knew off the bat. But like as I'm listening to like some of the stuff I didn't know, I'm like, well, shit, I'm in some trouble here. <laughs> uh, because I always feel bad cutting a song that's good. Uh-huh. Um, I always try to keep in mind, you know, that this is about trying to turn on people to right. whatever whatever band we're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like if if there's a good song, and I'm automatically just taking it out just because something minuscule it's like man like what if that's the one that would have turned yeah. somebody on yeah um but i mean at, at the end of the day you gotta you have to a play the game and you <laughs> i couldn't I, I i couldn't play the game because i don't think but maybe two or three of the songs that i knew going in made my list mm-hmm. yeah, most of them one there's one song that i was just i don't care if i ever hear again and I'll let, you, I'll let you guys figure that one out. You probably know. <laughs> I have a cu- couple of good guesses, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but there, this is some great musicianship, which that's that's going to get me every time. Um, I'm 50-50 on Morrison. I, his voice isn't, like, amazing. Yeah. But it's it's good. It was right. perfect for that band. Yes. Exactly. Because, exactly. like, I listened to a couple of the songs from their later albums after he had passed away, and they it was clearly like they had had these songs written and they were meant for him. Right. But they just had, I don't know who, I guess it was Densmore or something singing. Yeah. And it just wasn't the same. It was like you could go to the oceanfront and hear any, you know, kind of blues band <laughs> right, cover these right. songs, yeah. you know. I didn't realize that there was going to be so much blues involved. Um, I... I can get down to some blues, man. Like I, I don't know that I necessarily like no blues, but you know, the last uh, ten years or so of my life, I've really starting to appreciate it that yeah. way. Yeah, and you know, like j- you hear a, a good blues uh, lick, even if it's one you've probably heard a million times, if it's done right with all the other instruments and there's some decent vocals to it, you know, you got some magic coming around. Right. Um. I felt really good listening to this band, which is why it was so weird to me that I don't think this has happened yet. Uh, you know, the Foo Fighters hate was outside of deprogrammed. Like, it's yeah. just things I had seen over the years. I actively saw two people call the doors overrated. And I don't know, man. I don't I don't get that. I, after listening to them and after... I don't feel like the Doors are one of those bands that have ever gotten crammed down my throat. Right. Right. So, like, I don't understand how they could be overrated. I feel like they're rated. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think Properly it's, rated. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could see where it just wouldn't strike a chord with somebody. Like, yeah. you just listen to it and you're saying, hey, this is not for me. Yeah. Right. But you have to listen to them and say, like, hey, these guys, like, I respect what they did. This is how they sounded. There's been nobody that sounded like this band ever since. Right. Like, there's a million bands that sound like the Beatles. Yep. There's a million yeah. bands that sound like the Rolling Stones or somebody Zeppelin, else. Zeppelin, yeah. Yeah, but nobody sounds like the Doors. They don't, and I think a lot of it is what you were saying. It goes back to, because I'm the same way. I was born in 88, and I used to hear the same thing from my parents. You know, you were born in the wrong generation, and a lot <laughs> of it is going back and doing that that research, doing your own personal homework, 
and understanding the backstories to a lot of this stuff. You know, when they first broke onto the scene, there was a lot of hippie and flower power deal going on, and they they were in your face. You mm-hmm. know, they were counterculture, so there was a lot of a lot of resistance, and so there's a lot of stuff that you can get by listening to the music, absolutely, but you only get a part of the story, and it's a very important part, but it's not the entire story. So I think if you know the backstory, it makes you appreciate it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I... Uh I once got compared. The, this is a little. Again, I never got into the Doors. Somebody, I used to be in a band called Great American Headache, and we played one of our songs for somebody, and the guy compared me to Morrison, and not knowing, you know, much about Morrison, mm-hmm. uh, it was weird to me. But then I, I like took it as this great compliment. Because number one, I know I know what people think of Morrison. Firstly, right, and secondly, the Smashing Pumpkins are hands down my favorite band ever. Period. I I don't know that that'll ever change about me. Um, Billy Corgan and Gish era. If you watch any kind of documentary on them, was all about some Morrison, mm-hmm. and so much so that Courtney Love made the mistake of telling him that his haircut looked sort of like Morrison. And so, like, in one of the videos, like, he just went full on Morrison and, like, <laughs> just, I, like, he took it. Per- so That actually m- makes a lot of sense now that you say that. Like, I've never made the connection between the yeah. two bands, but it, it really does. Right. Yeah. And so, like, and even lyrically, I, I, I can connect the two. Like, I feel like, I, I feel like Billy writes a lot of poetry that just gets put to music. Now, musically, the two bands are very, mm-hmm. very different. Um but all I can say is I just I cannot understand where somebody would I just I could I could get where people may not like it but overrated just that that doesn't fly with me right I I I don't get it and uh to Corey's point I actually read his uh biography yeah if you like reading about people drinking (laughs) there's a lot of good stories with them (laughs) a lot uh I mean it was a it was a fascinating read like well, to be fair, the only bad one I read was uh, Ketis's, I think. Ketis's wasn't very good. But uh, <laughs> Morrison's, I, I blasted through, but it was like, he's drunk, showing his dick places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kind of guy. Right? It's, it's, kind of fun, it's a fun read. I, yeah. I can dig it. All right, so time to play the game. Uh, we're talking about the Boars, the Boars today. And the yep. Doors. The Doors, too. <laughs> <laughs> Name of the game is Deprogrammed. And uh, the three of us have each put together a list of 20 songs that we think are either A, our favorites, or B, uh, really uh, encapsulate the band well. Um, the idea here is we're going to try to mash all 60 songs together and come out with a, a starter kit for The Doors. So maybe on the other side of this, if you're listening uh, and have never checked out The Doors before, you check out these 10 songs and go from there see if you like it maybe you do maybe you don't um also we can we'll listen to some clips if we need them later on i might i tried to cram i actually i started on friday i, I no i started thursday because me and james were sitting here in the studio till like 2 a.m <laughs> <laughs> so i started i started on thursday but then i listened to a couple on monday and then uh i crammed all the rest in today wow Wait, and uh, I hate doing that because like I can't get I can't get like a good explanation of why I like this song and mm-hmm. why I didn't like yeah. this song. I hate doing that, but um I don't th- I don't think any extra time would have helped me here. That's the one thing I'll say. I always right. need time to digest the list because like I looked at it today and I went back and I made so many changes at the last minute that I was like, "Why did I even put that song on there?" <laughs> yeah. Like, what is this? And I just just started throwing stuff around. Yeah. So Yeah. I guess I will start, and I'm going to start here because it's the first first lyric of the song. It's also the title of the song, and it hit me so hard, just the way he delivered it. I'm going with been down so long. Got it. I got it, too. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> like, just that delivery, like, the, the I don't even know how, like, it's, like, almost a growl. It's... So yeah. there's pain there. Yep. Just, I've been down so long. Like mm-hmm. and just right from there I'm like, okay, I'm in. Yep. I don't I don't need to hear anything else. I'm in. And I just I I I took a step back and I just sat there and listened. I'm like, yeah, that, 
that's one. I'm yeah. definitely there. It punches you in the face immediately, and yep. that's it's it's got the blues feel, like you're saying. That's that's off L.A. Woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I I love that. So it does. It punches you in the face immediately, and that's that's toward the end, obviously, where he's he's dealing with his demons a ton. Yeah, you know, and he's almost in a way crying out for help mm-hmm. before he moves off to Paris. Yes, <laughs> that didn't work out so well. Well, nope, not for, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Have a drink, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, 30. Yes. All right, Corey. Man, one and one. We're doing all right. Yep. Let's um, go. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> all righty. Um, I'm going to go uh, super commercial. I'm going to go to their first album, self-titled The Doors, um, primarily because this, in a in a way, is what catapulted them into America's eye on the Ed Sullivan's show. Uh, I'm going Light My Fire. Um, for those who don't know the backstory, the Ed Sullivan Show was a huge show back in the day that brought bands on more or less to, hey, here they are, America. And uh, Ed Sullivan said, hey, you know, the lyric was, you know, girl, we couldn't get much higher. Ed Sullivan wanted him to change the lyric from higher to better. Uh, there's two sides of the story where Jim Morrison either forgot and just went ahead and sang. Yeah. As as he remembered it, but if you know anything about him, that's probably bullshit. You know, he just said, all right, fuck you, and sang it as it was. And, you know, they said, all right, well, you're never coming back. They had six shows still booked, and he was like, hey, look, we've already done the Ed Sullivan show. We're good. So <laughs> I forgot his, about that story. Yeah. That's a great story. Historical value, and it's it's super catchy. I'm going to light my fire. Shit. Because that's <laughs> one of the ones I, I forgot about that story. That actually – would have put it back in play. I have to yeah. agree with you. Like that was one that I feel like everybody's kind of already heard it. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if I really need to put that one. And I have, you know, only 20 spots. Right. I'm going to, I'm not going to add that one. Yeah. Yep. But, but it, it hurt. <laughs> yeah. See, like I said, I, I, I just heard it so many times, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe if I had thought it, cause I read that story, obviously when I was reading the book, had, right. I, had I remembered that story that may have put it back in play. But gave him the double middle fingers. I yeah. Guess, you, know, you know, sometimes I have to double put those out. <laughs> well, we're one for two. I tried. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get through it, Corey. We oh, will. we will. Jenny. I'm going to start off with Strange Days. Got it. Trying nice. to think. Yes, it, yeah, me too. Oh, yep, awesome. I got through. I just loved, um, that's probably that's my favorite album too. overall. I just love all the different textures that they have in that song. And it's just... Yeah. To me, it's one of the things that, like, one of their best songs that kind of encapsulates that sound of the 60s at the time. Like, right. everything's psychedelic and just weird, and that's that was their tribute to it. Right. You can listen to that song sober and feel like you're tripping on shrooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's The Doors. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Man, okay, I don't know where to go next, because I'm looking at this list, I'm like, huh. Now, I know that there's a lot of these that I loved. But I'm ha- I'm having a hard time grasping at what exactly it was. Now I'm gonna okay I'll go here because I sort of remember this one. This one was like a very different song, and it actually reminded me of, of a Radiohead song uh, that's off a of Hail of the Thief. Now obviously, the Doors way before, <laughs> but I you know I heard Radiohead first, so yeah. th- what I thought I w- w- was was Radiohead. But um, it just has this like in the back, this like clap, like offbeat clap. My Wild Love. Oh. It goes like, oh, man, now I can't do it. Yeah. It's like a, a stomp. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, yep. It's got that, like, Indian um, yeah. beat, like the tribal beat in right. the background. Yeah. I do not have it, though. I don't either. That's okay. Sometimes you take swings. I actually almost pulled it because I had a feeling that it was way too out there. But Still a good tune, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Corey. All right. Um, I'm going to Strange Days. It's... uh. The first song that uh, Jim Morrison ever ever wrote, and uh, read the read the lyrics to Ray Manzarek on the beach in uh, California. I'm going Moonlight Drive. Yep. Ooh, got it too. Oh snap! Hell yeah! I've got that as number two on my top ten. Wow, that's definitely one of my favorite yeah. songs of theirs. That was so good. Yeah. Such a good song. Oh, I don't know where to go next. Um. I think I'm going to pull this one out of the Virginia Swamps, cool and slow with pen- plenty of precision. <laughs> uh, the Wasp, Texas Radio, and The Big Beat. I do not have that. Don't either. Just uh, missed my cut for my 20, though. 
I, l- I just love the how that song starts and it's mm-hmm. just it's just so cool let's see oh man see now i'm wondering about the ones i picked from la woman but okay uh where do i go all right i missed wildly with my last one from this record <laughs> but I, this is the only other one i had this was, was actually my least f- waiting for the sun was actually my least favorite record I'll say that. That one was almost a chore for me. I'm going to go five to one. I think I have that one. I don't. It just missed my cut. My I final do have 20. it. Okay. Right. So it'll get to hang around at least until the end of the show. All right, Corey? All right. Um, I'm going to go off waiting for the sun as well. Um, I've got this as number one on my list. Um, celebration of the Lizard King slash Not to Touch the Earth. Yes. Oh. I have that one. I had to add that just for the line, I am the Lizard King, I can I do can anything. I can do anything, yep. Because there may have been several times that I got really drunk and would say that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. And nobody knows who the hell you're talking about. <laughs> there was a few. and They were really cool, you know. Yeah. Like those are the cool kids you want to <laughs> hang out with. Exactly. So I get the feeling that maybe Waiting for the Sun is one of those albums that I would have. You guys have the advantage because you have time with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a day. Right. And yeah. so, like, it didn't hit me right away. And yeah. Okay. Jenny? Um, let's see. I'm going to go with uh, Roadhouse Blues on Morrison Hotel. Absolutely. I, feel I just love the, the swagger in that, and it's just, that's a great song. Yeah. Anytime there's a lyric that says, I woke up this morning and I got myself a beer, Yeah. <laughs> you win. I didn't realize I got that. I thought I had it. That is a kick-ass riff, though. That's such a good guitar riff. Dang, you're right. Have that fun. was a fun one to do at karaoke, too. I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm going to put that one at the top because I have a feeling that one's going to get pushed through. I've got to be almost as hammered as he was to do <laughs> karaoke, though. Yeah, that's exactly the point. Like, once yeah. you get to that point that you are brave enough to do karaoke, then you might as well pick a door song. Exactly, because <laughs> it fits perfectly and you'll sound just like him. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to move it to what I feel like may have been my f- favorite, maybe second favorite record uh, with uh, the Soft Parade. Uh, I'm going to try Running Blue here. Nope. Nope. Oh. The Whiffle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Corey. All right, where am I going? Where am I going? We're still doing good. All right, you went soft parade, so I'm going to go soft parade. I'm going to uh, tell all the people. Yep. Nope. You don't? Nope. It's still in the combo, though, because yeah. I got it. Since we're on this album, though, like, I'll just have to go ahead and put this out there. That is my least favorite album oh. by far. I concur. <laughs> really? <laughs> I agree. Uh, there's just, there's so many songs that just, it didn't even sound like them to me. Um And I think part of it was like there's a little bit of a bias because my ex-boyfriend who kind of helped get me into the doors, that was one of his favorites. So it kind of biased me against it. But still, even listening back to it, it's like, you know, I got two songs on that one. Um, And I'm going to I'm going to go with Wishful Sinful first. I ain't got that. Do not have it. Nope. I figured that was a long shot, but, you know. (laughs) You never know. Sometimes (laughs) you got to you got to throw them out there. Yeah. Uh, Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to go back to the self-titled. And I had some trouble with this one. I ended, I ultimately ended up going with this one uh, because it sounded like another song that I had initially picked that's almost 11 minutes long. And I was like, well, this is the pocket edition. That's <laughs> like three and some change. I'm going Soul Kitchen. Oh, I do have that one. It just missed mine. Blam. I just felt like uh, it's an easier sell, like a yeah. three and a half as opposed yeah. to 11. Yeah. I like the 11-minute song better, but I think that if I'm trying to get somebody in, they see that 11 minutes. Gonna be, exactly. They're going to get intimidated. Yeah. Yeah. And Getting the a, condensed one. That's the funny thing with The Doors is like every song on the album will be like two and a half to three minutes long, and then all of a sudden the last one is like 12. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I mean, it's fine. I, I can dig it. All right, Corey. All right, I'm going to stay off self-titled as well. Um, probably their most controversial song of all time, which is saying something. <laughs> um, I'm going the end. Oh. 
I don't have it. Did not it have really that. was oh. one of my last cuts. Really was. Okay. Um, man. Man. What do I do? What do I do? Okay, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, Peace Frog. Yep. That was one that my friend, um, who's a musician, he was basically like, this is my only, the only door song that he likes. Yeah. And he's biased against them because they didn't have a bass player. Uh. And that was something <laughs> that I never realized because I'm not a musician. So, like, right. I just listen and I hear what I think sounds good. Right. And I'm listening to it and I'm like, they have to have a bass player on this song. Like, they have to. Yeah. Like, and he's like, okay, they probably had a studio musician for this song. but <laughs> <laughs> They brought a dude in, gave him an eight ball. Exactly. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> that one, like, milled around. I listened to that one, like, two or three times, and ultimately it, it ended up getting cut. But yeah. that one was tough. Oh, man. That, hmm. There's a lot of these. I think I, w- I may have done myself a disservice trying to get a little of everything in, especially looking at my choices for L.A. Woman. Hey, we'll see. I'm going to wait on those. We'll see, because you kind of almost want to be well... Re- like, I, my 10th... find some answers, Wayne. Answers to what? Ask me a question. Okay, two trains are traveling at 60 miles an hour, one from Chicago, one from Los Angeles. No, ask me a question about your life. What am I supposed to do with my life? You should put on a concert in Aurora, Wayne. How am I going to get the bands to come? If you book them, they will come. But I don't know anything about putting on a concert. You must go to England and find a man named Del Preston. He's the greatest roadie that ever lived. He was with us in the good times and the bad. He will help you. Any more questions? Will Garth ever get his Sports Illustrated football phone? It was sent to the wrong house. We'll arrive tomorrow along with the swimsuit issue and the video, the Stanley Cup, 100 Years of Glory. Hey, how do I get back? Follow the weird naked Indian. Cool. Wake up. Wake up. 